and welcome back to Many Tribes, One Kingdom. It's your host Dustin here. And so you can, as you can tell by our title down below, we are bringing back an older series that I did back in December called The Names of God. And we're going to be kicking off the part two of this series with a particular favorite of mine called El Cana. But just before we get into that, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification because I know you're going to want to stay up to date on all of our videos. If you're viewing this on Facebook, please click the name that is above us and click go to our page and click the follow button because again you're going to want to stay up to date on all of our current content because we have a lot of stuff a lot of fun stuff coming up so without further ado we are going to be talking about El Cana Jealous God this name can be found in multiple places but most notably in Exodus chapter 34 and 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 so what does it mean when we uh, see jealous God? Well, in every in every instance in the Bible when it is used as when jealous God is used, it is a jealous in reference to the marriage between his people, is it the the people, and with God, or with the with the, the bride of Christ being the church, and Christ Himself, the church being married to Christ. Now, why is this very, very important for understanding? This was folk, This also was showing that there was a type of idolatry that was going on within, you know, the Jewish religion or within his people, what was known as Israel. There was a type of idolatry where they would worship graven images, molten images, uh, standing pillars, stone, um, animals, stars, or people, or um, where they divided their worship between God and his supposed wife as you saw earlier in our as you seen seen in an earlier video where we talked about the Asherah or God's wife again it's not really God did not have a wife that's why I'm using the quotations he did not want this type of idolatry to happen and again you can see written out throughout the entire Bible where God says I do not divide you do not divide your worship to me he is the sole object of, well, not the sole object, I'm so sorry. He is the sole deity for our worship. He is the sole God of our worship. All of our worship has to revolve around Him in order for it to mean anything. He doesn't want you to worship a tree and Him. He doesn't want you to worship a molten image and Him. He wants you just to worship Him. That is why He is jealous. And that's why you need to also focus your worship, your prayers, everything onto God. There's no other entity. I'm sorry. There's no other entity. There's nothing else that could take the place of God. There's nothing else on earth that can come close to what he is capable of. And that's why he is often referred to as El Kena. Not just that. He is God, but also not that he's just a jealous God, but that there's nothing else that can actually reach his ability. So why are you needlessly worshiping these other items instead of worshiping the one who can? You know, he is, as you see seen in earlier videos, where he would call him Jehovah Jireh, uh, the God our provider, where he's our healer. He's our banner. He is the commander of the hosts of heaven. You know, he wants us to solely focus on him because he is more than capable of taking care of us. We see this in John 3:16 where he sent where it says that he sent his own son to come and die for the people, to die for the sinners. I'm just paraphrasing that. Uh, but I do recommend you go read John 3:16. It's actually one of my favorite verses. Um so that is all that we have for El Cana, but this is again this is the first video with which it will be in a series that will be occurring every other Tuesday in the month. So God bless you guys and hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.